Good evening and welcome to the Harvard Business School New Venture Competition Finale Show. My name is Chuck Collins and I'm Associate Director for Student Programs at the Arthur Rock Center for Entrepreneurship. Tonight is brought to you by three areas on campus, the Arthur Rock Center for Entrepreneurship, the Social Enterprise Initiative, and alumni clubs and associations. During a time when we're still social distancing, we work to put together a showcase for you to really celebrate the finalists that you'll see in the competition today. This moment represents the culmination of work across three tracks, the alumni track, the social enterprise track, and the student business track. Throughout this competition, we've had more than 300 ventures competing in the competition, and more than 150 judges have scored them to get to tonight. Now, those companies have included a variety of topics, including robotics, drones, community engagement and impact organizations, cosmetics. I could simply continue that list. Now, in the judging pool, that represents founders, investors, and people who are change makers within the entrepreneurship ecosystem, both in the United States and globally. It's this type of activity that really makes Harvard Business School one of the absolute top schools for entrepreneurship. Very shortly, you're going to hear from 12 finalists in the competition, and we're going to be awarding three prizes in each track. The first prize will be the crowd favorite prize. That's where you will actually get to get involved and vote by poll for that award. The next are the runner-up, and then the grand prize awards. Those two have been chosen by the judges today, as a matter of fact. Now, the runner-up prize is valued at $25,000, and the grand prize is valued at $75,000. Now there's one other prize I want to make sure that you're aware of. That is the Tough Tech Prize. This was decided prior to tonight and is especially focused on hard and deep tech ventures in the competition. That is valued at $10,000. So effectively, in about 40 minutes or so, we're awarding $325,000 to the ventures tonight. Now, the agenda for the evening. We all like an agenda. We're going to go in order of three tracks the alumni, the social enterprise, and the student business. In each track, you are going to hear 90-second stage pitches from our top four finalists. At the end of that is when you will actually vote for crowd favorite. Now, speaking of crowd favorite voting and sort of these other tools you might see on your screen, I want to talk about what's in front of you. The very first thing is the chat box. It's probably the most obvious. And we have a number of you joining us both in the US and globally, so give it a try. Give us a nickname, and then tell us where you're joining us from tonight. I'm getting a good signal. Great. Awesome. Now, two other buttons I want to talk about on your screen are the thumbs up and also the ability to cheer. Now, similar to many of your social media platforms, what you see here on this screen represents you tonight in your excitement for the competition and the excitement for the ventures. So every time you hit that button, give it a good, good click. This represents you right now. Now the third button I want to point out to you is the clapping button. So when you're excited about a team, hit that button as fast as you can. In fact, start hitting it now. I really want to hear a round of applause from you. I'm getting a signal. Yes, that is it. You can keep going at it. <laughs> awesome. No, that's fantastic. Now, one little note on that clapping button is that we will turn it down throughout the evening at key points. So during the pitches, we'll have it low so you can focus on what's in front of you. And as soon as they're done, it comes right back up so you can celebrate the teams that you just, just saw. Now, one other thing I want to mention is that for those of you who are also on social media alongside the show tonight, the hashtag we're using is HBSNVC. We're primarily on Twitter, but whatever platform you're using, we'd love to hear your comments about the show and the finalists tonight. Again, that's hashtag HBSNVC. Now, very shortly, I'll be joined by three special guests. First up, we Mary Helen Black, Director of Alumni Clubs and Associations. She'll be followed by Rob Zesky, director of the Social Enterprise Initiative, and last will be Jody Gernon, director of the Arthur Rock Center for Entrepreneurship. Now, before we really get to the tracks, it's only fair that since we are asking 90-second pitches of our finalists, that we also ask for a message from one of our HBS faculty. So it is my pleasure to welcome and introduce Professor Shikhar Ghosh. He's one of the faculty co-chairs for the Arthur Rock Center for Entrepreneurship. 
In his career, he's been a founder, investor, and has served on a number of boards. And we are fortunate to have his support and thought leadership in the center. So with that, I would like to welcome Shikhar Ghosh. Good evening. Welcome to the finals of the New Venture Competition. Uh, by way of introduction, I'm going to tell you a story and leave you with a question. So the story actually starts back in 1958 when an engineer, William Greatcrest, was tinkering with a device that he had created to record, the heartbeat, uh, record a heartbeat. And as he reached into his box, he pulled out a transistor uh, and put it into his device. It turned out it was the wrong transistor. So it was about 100 times more powerful than the one he wanted to use. And he put it in there and then suddenly recognized that the device was sending out pulses instead of doing a recording. Now, someone else might have just replaced the transistor, continued with what he was doing, but he was curious about why this was happening and what he could do with it. Two years later, after trials with dogs and then very limited trials with humans, he had created the implantable pacemaker. Why is this important now? Um, for me, it's really critical because six months ago, I was driving in the Berkshires. I stopped at about 9 o'clock to get some gas, and as I went to the pump, I suddenly lost any sense of where I was and collapsed on the ground. About 15 minutes later, I woke up. I had no idea why I was on the ground. I had no idea what was happening around me, uh, but I knew something had happened. And so fast forward a week later, and I had, an, had a pacemaker in me. Somehow, his initiative, his ability to sacrifice everything he had to pursue something that he thought was possible, 60 years later had bridged time and had come to affect my life. What all of you are doing today are, is essentially the same process. You are going through the process of creating something new that's going to affect people's lives in all different domains, in multiple domains and multiple ways that you cannot even imagine now. Um, and so the question that I want to leave you with is I'm going to give you the names of a few companies and I want you to think about what's common across them. Um, FedEx, PayPal, Facebook, Google, Apple, Microsoft. So you might look at them and say these are all successful companies and that's true. But none of them went through the NVC. None of them got to the stage that you got to. So you're already ahead. But what's really important about them was that every one of them was rejected by VCs over 10 times. That the VCs, when they looked at each of these companies, refused to invest in them because they didn't believe. And so for all of you who've come through this process and have made it to the next round, remember that at this stage, it's almost impossible to tell which ideas are going to be successful and which ones are not. And so the important thing is that you have taken this step, that you've decided to put yourself on this journey, that you've committed your time, you've committed your passion, to it, and at the end of it, in the same way as having a child changes you, this journey will change you. It'll push your limits. It'll get you to understand what you're capable of. So thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Shikhar, for those uh, inspiring words and what is really such a personal story about the impact of entrepreneurship on your own life. Uh, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, but now we're going to move on to the very first track of this evening, the alumni track. So it is my pleasure to welcome and introduce Mary Helen Black, Director of Alumni Clubs and Associations to introduce the track and its finalists. Mary Helen, take it away. Thanks, Chuck. Good evening to all of our alumni, friends, and students that have joined us today. I'm delighted to present the four alumni track finalists. With over 50% of our alumni going into entrepreneurship, at some point in their career, the alumni track of NVC serves as a launch pad for innovation and new ventures, providing access and exposure to potential investors, mentors, and advisors. This year, we had a record 166 ventures and competitions hosted by clubs and associations throughout the world. And the result, nine fantastic teams hailing from Latin America, to Asia and everywhere in between. Today, the nine finalists were in a marathon pitching session with our alumni track judges. These judges are top tier founders and venture capitalists from across the globe 
and they chose the final four teams that you'll now meet. At the end of the pitches, we'll share information on how to choose your favorite. So now please join me in welcoming our amazing alumni finalists. At Bone Health Technologies, we are on a mission to alter the trajectory of osteoporosis, one of the most important unsolved public health conditions today. One in four men and half of American women will suffer a fracture due to osteoporosis, more for women than the incidence of heart attack, stroke, and breast cancer combined. Hip fractures kill 20% of their victims, and common spine fractures are debilitating at a healthcare cost of $19 billion. The average American woman develops osteopenia in her 50s, progressing to osteoporosis in her 60s, despite medications. The problem is that these medications have such serious side effects that they are not recommended until you already have osteoporosis. A safe earlier intervention is needed. Since astronauts experience bone loss in space, NASA conducted research on this problem and proved conclusively that using whole body vibration platforms improve bone density but compliance and cost have prevented their success. OsteoBoost takes the proven precise vibration technology and puts it in a convenient and comfortable belt form factor where the vibration is applied to the most vulnerable anatomy, the hip and spine. The NIH has granted us over $2 million funding our pivotal trial, showing with statistical significance that our device delivers improved bone density on par with medication. We received FDA breakthrough device status, guaranteeing a fast track process and reimbursement by Medicare for our prescription device. We expect to finish our pivotal trial and achieve FDA clearance the middle of next year, laying the foundation for an enormous business, targeting a $30 billion addressable market as we work to end the problem of osteoporosis. Thank you. Did you know that with current disposable baby diapers, even the most natural ones, your baby's bum sits in 100% plastic all day? That means two to three years or 30,000 hours of your baby sitting in fossil fuel derived, hormone disrupting, skin irritating plastic, all of which ends up in landfills. Not anymore. Kudos is the first and only disposable diaper where baby's bum sits in 100% clean cotton all day, not plastic. Why cotton? It's natural, soft, breathable, hypoallergenic, and the number one doctor recommended material for ration eczema. Our patent pending technology has been tested on hundreds of babies, and I'm thrilled to say that we've had zero cases of diaper rash. My name is Amrita Seigold, and I'm a former engineer for Procter & Gamble's Always Pads, and previously founded one of India's leading eco-friendly sanitary pad companies. At Kudos, we are disrupting the $65 billion baby diaper market. Launching this Mother's Day for the same price as leading natural diaper brands, parents will no longer have to compromise on a diaper that is good for their baby, the planet, and their couch. With diapers being the third largest contributor to landfill waste, we believe that real change starts on the changing table. And with kudos, we are committed to making that change one tush at a time. Hi, I'm John, and I'm co-founder of Marvin. As clinicians, you'd expect clinical therapy to appeal to healthcare workers. But it turns out that doctors have the highest suicide rate of any profession and they rarely seek out care, which is a travesty. Why? Because it's hard to find a therapist who that understands their lifestyle, they don't get treatment plans that fit them, and there's too many barriers to receiving service. Our solution to this problem is Marvin, a teletherapy platform with specialty trained clinicians that designs custom treatment programs for high stress roles like healthcare workers. As a result, your first therapist is perfectly matched and you're likely to make immediate progress and sustain it. We provide a tailored experience partnering with the hospitals themselves so that the mental health experience feels luxurious and not limiting. With our focused approach, we've established pilots with a number of institutions, including UCSF, Brigham and Women's Hospital here in Boston, and the Harvard Psychiatry Department, amongst others. 
With these programs, normally 40% of their patients have high satisfaction with therapy, but 90% of Marvin's clients are highly satisfied with our focused approach. As a business, healthcare is the largest employment sector in the U.S., employing 18 million people with a massive market size of 14 billion. Our revenue model is based on insurance reimbursement, and we'll have more than 2 million in ARR in our first year. This opportunity to provide support for healthcare workers is a massive and important one, and we're expanding rapidly to capture it. Thank you. Welcome to Pressroots Silk Blowout Bar. My name is Kirsten Gaines and I'm the founder and CEO. Pressroots is the first national chain of blowout bars focused on the specific needs of women with highly textured hair. If you're familiar with any of the blowout bar concepts that disrupted the salon industry about a decade ago, such as dry bar, blow, think of us as that, but for ethnic hair care. We do one thing, silk blowouts, and we do it extremely well. Our stylists go through a rigorous boot camp where they learn the proven and repeatable press roots method of styling hair, which ensures that regardless of which chair a client sits in, regardless of which press roots a client goes to, they'll receive the exact same quality results. And we do it all in 90 minutes, which is huge for this demographic that's used to spending between four to five hours in traditional salons on this very same service. We opened our doors last March. That's right, right as the entire world was shutting down for the pandemic. In an economy where salons were shutting down all over the world, press groups grew, and we were maxed out with available appointments every single weekend from day one, proving that the demand for this service is real. Please join me in making quality hair care accessible for all women. Thank you. Wow. Give them a round of applause for those alumni finalists. Fantastic work. Thank you, Mary Helen and finalists. All right, viewers, this is the first crowd favorite vote of this evening. So on your screen, you may notice four options just on the side. I want you to sit there and think about who you saw, what you heard, what did you find to be the most compelling pitch that we should award $5,000 to on your behalf. Now, you've got a total of 60 seconds, and in fact, time has already started, so cast that vote. While we wait, one thing I might want to ask, is I'm sure we have more than a few alumni on this call tonight, and we just finished the alumni track. Let us know your graduation year in the chat box. Only a few more seconds remaining. All right, that is time. Crowd favorite voting for the alumni track is now complete. Welcome back to our second track of this evening. What we're going to do is move on to the social enterprise track. So it is my pleasure to welcome Rob Zesky, director of the Social Enterprise Initiative at Harvard Business School. Rob, the floor is yours. Thanks, Chuck. It's great to be here. The social enterprise track began in 2001, seeking to engage and support change makers across Harvard. Headquartered at HBS, but open to graduate students across the university, teams pursue a mix of nonprofit, for profit, and hybrid models to tackle society's toughest challenges. These teams put forward a staggering array of ideas to create better markets and correct market failures. And as 21st century social entrepreneurs, they're solving problems that cut across the public, private, and nonprofit sectors. 
we're living through an extraordinary year and at which our world's shortcomings and inequities seem to be on full display. And we need our social entrepreneurs' innovation to address these market failures more than ever before. But at this school and through this new venture competition, we also celebrate and support the courage, the community, and the connections that are going to be needed for even the smartest and boldest social entrepreneurs to live up to our mission to make a difference in a world that is both meaningful and lasting. We've never needed these leaders more and have never been more vested in supporting the practice and ecosystem of entrepreneurship at HBS and Harvard University. So now I'd like to introduce you to our four fantastic social enterprise track finalists. I am Helga, co-founder of Afia Pamoja, an SMS patient feedback service for public health care facilities in Tanzania. We believe citizens' voices are key for having responsive and accountable health care services. As a Tanzanian medical doctor and public health professional, I've seen our health care challenges. Maternal mortality is 100 times greater than in high-income countries. 50 million Tanzanians receive care from 6,000 primary care facilities. But sadly, 81% don't meet government standards. I know that inadequate performance management systems, such as suggestion boxes, are key to this. They fail to provide actionable patient-centered insights. Afia Pamoja is solving this. I'm Simon, Helga's co-founder and a student at Harvard's Business School and Public Policy School. So what is Afia Pamoja? Afia Pamoja is a digital patient feedback service. Using SMS service to patients, we provide real-time insights to public health managers. Research shows that such systems can have dramatic impacts on health outcomes, and digital technologies make this scale. With our experiences in Africa across public health, social enterprises, civic tech and government, we believe we can make this a reality. We've won seed funding, developed our prototype, and have government approval to pilot it. We now need to test it, prove its impact, and scale it nationwide, elevating the voices of 50 million citizens to save lives. right now, but our second skin is also one of the biggest polluters on our planet. I know this too well because my childhood playground in Asia is now a textile dumpster if I go back. And in Bangladesh, one of the biggest clothing manufacturers in the world, textile waste is taking over. By 2050, climate change will displace about 20 million people in the country. I'm Shelly from Shelly Shoe Design. We're on a mission to change this, and what I'm wearing is the solution. This is one of our zero waste designs. It's made by climate refugees paid about four times the local wage so they can rebuild their lives. It's zero fabric and water waste, reducing our carbon footprint by 80% or more. It's supported by our trade secret design method and scaled through proprietary AI. It's made from local textile waste, so every jacket is a step closer to a clean planet. We turn waste into beauty and profit. Through technical efficiency and minimalism, we reduce our production costs by 55%. And we output beautiful designs that have been invited to all major fashion shows around the world, including opening for Milan Fashion Week. We have sold out our designs and attracted over 22,000 followers on Instagram, mainly young designers inspired by what we do. We will now go from product to platform, and we have the team to do this because we combine the best of design and engineering. Our proprietary genetic algorithm allows us to scale zero waste to any brand, any style. We just closed our first brand partnership deal that incorporates this algorithm. We will bring a new generation of clothing designs that looks beautiful on our bodies and restores our planet. Hi, I'm Omolara, and I founded a tech-enabled racial justice company called Thrive. You know, I can tell you about how I went to Harvard and worked at awesome places, but what I really want to tell you is that 84% of kids born in poverty will live in poverty for the rest of their lives. And we know that these are disproportionately Black and Brown children. This is not the America my parents left Nigeria for, and it's not the America that any of us want to live in. And we don't have to. At Thrive, we built an app that identifies systemic racism in local government budgets. Our equity audits track more than 80 measures to answer two simple questions. 
First is the government investing in solutions that have been scientifically proven to break cycles of poverty, like prenatal interventions and social workers in schools. And second is the government authentically sharing power with communities of color. After the audit, we make recommendations for equity centered budgeting. So far, 12 jurisdictions in eight states have inquired about our equity audits. We've gotten tons of national media attention and recognition from Black Girl Ventures and Halcyon. Everyone on my team is a boss. Pip is our MBA Marine Corps veteran who takes care of financials and operations. Evan is our killer engineer who built the app. And I'm the impact evaluator who knows what works in local government. Let's go. The U.S. federal government spends $50 per student per year on STEM education compared to just five cents on civics education. And this hurts low-income students the most. Compared to their peers, they're half as likely to study how laws are made and 30% less likely to have debates or panel discussions in a history class. That's why I'm launching Vocal Justice, whose mission is to empower Black and Brown youth to become socially conscious leaders by engaging them in a culturally affirming public speaking program. We help students build their confidence, critical consciousness, and communication skills. What makes us unique from peer organizations is that we go deep on the skill of storytelling. Research shows it's one of the most powerful tools needed to advocate for social change. We reach students by training and compensating their teachers to integrate our program into an existing class or to run it as an after school club. We received over 80 applications from high school educators across the country who wanted to be in our fellowship, and we selected 15 to be part of our pilot program. And what we've learned already from doing this pilot is that our program is not just a win for the students, but for the teachers too. They finally have a community of people who also care about social justice education, just like they do. I'm excited to scale in the coming year and be with 25 teachers impacting over a thousand students. And I love your support to get there. Thanks for your consideration. Wow. Thank you, social enterprise finalists. Audience, let's give them a round of applause. Our finalists can actually hear what you're clapping. So go ahead, hit that button for us. We'd love to hear how excited you are about them. While you do that though, it's time for our second crowd favorite vote tonight. So it's the exact same process as before. On the side of your screen, you'll have your four options. Think about those mission-driven companies that you just heard, and who did you find to be most compelling and cast your vote for us for the crowd favorite? And of course, while we wait, maybe in the chat box, who do you think is going to win the grand prize and maybe the runner-up prize in the social enterprise track? We'd love to hear your guesses. Okay, you have five seconds left to complete your votes. All right, that is it. Crowd favorite voting for the social enterprise track is now complete. Thanks, viewers. Welcome back for our third and final track this evening, the student business track. So it is my pleasure to bring on Jody Gernon, director of the Arthur Rock Center for Entrepreneurship to introduce the student business track and its finalists. Jody, take it away. Thank you, Chuck. Hello, everyone. What a great group of teams we've had, we've seen so far. Now we'll hear from our students focused on high growth ventures. At the Rock Center, our goal is to support HBS students and alumni who are starting, joining, and investing in high growth ventures. The new venture competition is one of many programs that we run each year to support this journey and to showcase our student and alumni founding teams. 
As we have seen in the past, the HBS entrepreneurship ecosystem continues to be extremely vibrant with students pursuing new ideas throughout their tenure at HBS. Past winners of the Student New Venture Competition have included such esteemed companies as the recently IPO'd Cloudflare, provide, which provides a more secure internet, Getaway, which provides much needed respites, especially during this pandemic, via tiny home getaways in remote locations, and Rapid SOS, which is saving the lives of millions via, more, via a more modernized and accurate 911 system. This year's teams are just as innovative. We had over 85 teams participate for the first round alone. From that round, 16 teams were selected to move on to the semifinals and then eight pitched to our esteemed finals judges earlier today. You will hear from the top four scoring teams tonight, but all the teams are truly impressive. So without further ado, let's hear from the final four student business track teams. Eighty-seven thousand North American construction firms purchase rock, sand, and cement each day. These companies spend over sixty billion dollars annually on these three materials alone. The transactions tend to play out like this: Tony, my rock is running low. I need a hundred tons of one-inch stone before six a.m. tomorrow. Easy enough. Tony sends me the wrong type of stone three hours late. Every ten minutes I'm delayed, costs me thousands of dollars. Each time I place an order. I receive dozens of delivery tickets per supplier. These paper tickets are frequently lost and damaged, and it's my only proof of delivery. A few weeks later, I receive an invoice. I have to match each ticket to a line item to make sure the details are accurate. This manual process takes hundreds of hours a month to complete. Not only is this process brutal, but there's another kicker. Tony, you're charging me 20% more for the rock than you're charging Semex, and I pay you quicker than they do. At least give us a fighting chance. The situation isn't fair. My co-founder and I come from multi-generation construction families. We grew up on job sites and we learned the business from the ground up. We've experienced these problems on a daily basis. We at Concord Materials will solve each of these issues from ordering to reconciling to overcharging. Our current solution is helping four beta customers, including the largest independent concrete producer in New England, eliminate these costly barriers to growth. We are in the process of building density along the I-95 corridor from Boston to Philly, and then we'll expand to other mega regions. Please join us as we even the playing field for the little guy. Hi. If I told you that it would be cheaper for you to buy a used car part here in the US on eBay, have it shipped to Africa, then it would be for you to buy the exact same part locally, you'd think that's crazy. That's been my experience. My name is Ghana and I'm the co-founder of Garage. Garage helps 15 million auto mechanics across sub-Saharan Africa pay up to 30% less on auto spare parts. My co-founder Cedric and I grew up in Africa and we spent a lot of time in garages and we know every penny saved really goes a long way for mechanics and for their families. Our platform aggregates demand from across multiple mechanics and by buying in bulk, we help mechanics save and put more money into their pockets. That's right, Ghana. Garage would change the lives of these mechanics. Now today, they are paying up to 70% of their revenues towards spare parts. Now think about that and imagine how the lives of these moms and dads would be different if that bill went down. You see, somebody has to take up this challenge. The auto repair market is boring and hasn't changed in 50 years. And so we believe now is the time to leverage our technical background and market know-how to disrupt this $16 billion market. Thank you. Jawan from Hype Health. Coming from the Philippines, I've seen too many times family and friends wipe out their savings when someone falls sick. Over 50% of our health costs are being paid out of pocket 
forcing 2 million Filipinos into poverty each year. This is because, unlike in the U.S., health insurance in the Philippines is capped, meaning only a small portion of one's medical bill is actually covered. While government provides universal health insurance, it's not enough. Unfortunately, supplemental private health plans are extremely difficult to navigate, making it accessible to only less than 10% of 110 million Filipinos. Plans are confusing, claims are cumbersome, and people sometimes line up for many hours just to get a pre-approval for a simple checkup. So with a rising middle class, over 90% mobile penetration, and a fast-growing health insurance market, the Philippines has just become ripe for disruption. This is an unprecedented $18 billion market opportunity to serve over 70 million Filipinos. And this is where Hive Health comes in. We're a digital health insurer that provides easy and affordable health insurance. We aggregate employees for better risk pooling, apply data science to unlock more value, and our user-centric platform makes getting care simple and stress-free. We hope you'll join us in reimagining the future of healthcare in the Philippines and beyond. I'm Nicole. I'm Sylvan. And we're the co-founders of Hue Beauty. We came together because we were all frustrated by how difficult it was for us to find the right makeup products for our complexion, despite each of us being at very different points of the skin tone spectrum. And we knew that no one had truly solved this problem yet, and we saw the opportunity to combine forces with our backgrounds in beauty and tech to create a truly foolproof experience for the customer. To do this, we will create a platform for shade matching that will be integrated directly into the brand sites. How it'll work is that when customers land on a product page, they will see a link to find their shade with Hue. First, using the camera on their phone, our photo matching technology will scan their face and match the customers to their skin twins, who are beauty enthusiasts in our networks who share the same skin tone and who will provide shade recommendations based on their own experience with the products. Lastly, the customer can order a shade sample kit with those three shades, which she can try at home, Warby Parker style, to find her preferred shade match. In terms of traction, we already have our first paying customers. We recently launched a beta Shopify store and recruited customers via Facebook and Instagram ads and secured 35 orders in less than two weeks for $5 a kit. Our next step is to continue building up our skin twin network and photo technology. And in parallel, we're in conversations with brands to engage in our first pilot partnerships. And we're not stopping here. We are fully committed to working on this full time at HBS and beyond. We envision Hue Beauty completely revolutionizing the way brands and consumers connect digitally. Congratulations to our top four finalists in the student business track. Great job. All right, viewers, give them a round of applause. They can hear you. We're excited that they're here tonight and that you've joined us as well. So we're at the third and final crowd favorite vote for this evening. It's the same thing, and it's the last time we're going to ask you to vote. So think about who did you see in those pitches and cast your vote now. While we wait for people to finish casting their votes, I want to tell you about another opportunity to learn more about the startups that are coming out of Harvard Business School this spring, the Rock Center's Demo Day. That's going to be on April 8th, starting at 6.30 p.m. If you want to register, just go to our website, entrepreneurship.hbs.edu, go to the Accelerator page and register. We hope that you'll join us to see some of these fantastic ventures launching this spring. And three, two, one, time's up. That is our final and last crowd favorite vote this evening. Crowd favorite voting for that student business track is now complete. Great. Now, to be honest, we need a little bit of time to count those thousands of crowd favorite votes that you just sent in to us. And to do that, we're actually gonna bring back Jody Gernon to send us a special message to our sponsors and our judges. So Jody, welcome back. Thanks, Chuck. 
I would like to take a moment to thank several different groups who have been so integral to the execution and success of the MVC. First, I want to thank all of our judges. We have hundreds of judges who participate across the three tracks. And these judges come from Paris to Boston to San Francisco and Asia to support our student and alumni participants, providing feedback and guidance to make this competition meaningful at all the stages of this event. It is a pretty significant time commitment and we really appreciate it. Thank you judges for your dedication and commitment to this program. I would also like to thank our sponsors who have provided time and in-kind services from legal to technology support and more. This is incredibly crucial to many of these startups as they get launch their ventures out of HBS. We'd also like to thank our generous donors for making the prizes for this evening possible. I'd also like to take this time to remind you that next year we celebrate 25 years of the new venture competition. It's hard to believe we've been doing this for 25 years. Over the next year, we will be looking at where these startups are now and the impact they have had in disrupting industries and creating jobs around the world. Please make sure you're signed up for the Rock or excuse me, Social Enterprise Initiative newsletter to learn more about activities and events that will lead up to the 25th anniversary of the NBC finale. Thank you. Thanks, Jody. All right, audience. This is the exact moment that you have all joined us for this evening. We have finally arrived at the point that we are going to tell you the winners and issue the awards. Now, the very first one is my privilege to introduce, and I'm excited to announce the Tough Tech Prize. Now, as a reminder, the Tough Tech Prize was decided before tonight, so when I announce that team's name, we'll watch their pitch video. The Tough Tech Prize is focused on those hard and deep tech ventures that are in the competition, so this can include anything from like pharma and life sciences, biotech, climate tech, the list could go on and on. But these ventures typically have a much longer cycle to reach market than some of these other companies, and so we wanted to make sure that we support them. I do want to give a special thanks to our partner initiatives who've contributed to this prize in order to make it a reality, as this is the second year that we've awarded the prize. So a special thanks that in addition to the Arthur Rock Center for Entrepreneurship, thank you to the Digital Initiative, the Business and Environment Initiative, and the Healthcare Initiative, because without their support, the prize itself would not exist. So, viewers, it is my pleasure to announce that the winner of the 2021 Tough Tech Prize in the New Venture Competition finale is Caravez Bio. Hello everyone, my name is Hunter Goebel. I'm one of the co-founders of Caravez Bio, a new biotech company that is transforming chronic disease treatment through better biologic drug delivery. What are biologics? Biologics are a class of medicines that are made from living cells. These medicines revolutionized treatment of chronic diseases from Crohn's disease to cancer and created a $280 billion market in the process. But biologics are large molecules, which makes them hard to deliver. There are natural barriers in the body, such as the lining of the gut, lungs, and the blood brain barrier, which evolved to exclude large molecules like biologics. This creates two problems in clinical practice. First, biologics have to be injected or infused, which is painful, inconvenient, and costly. And even when injected, they often don't get where they need to go because they're blocked by those barriers in the body. Our solution is a platform that can transport large molecule therapeutics across those, those natural cell barriers in the body, thereby solving both problems at once. By enabling absorption across the, the mucosal lining in the gut, we can turn injections into pills. And by facilitating absorption across the blood-brain barrier, we can enable treatment of previously undruggable diseases like Alzheimer's disease. Of course, with such big goals, there's a lot of work that remains to be done. Your support will enable critical de-risking experiments that we have planned for later this summer. So we hope you'll join us. Thank you for listening. Congratulations again to Caravez Bio. Give them a round of applause, everybody. We're really excited to celebrate the second year of the Tough Tech Prize and their venture. So, moving on into the first track of tonight. We're gonna revisit the alumni track to announce those awards. 
will bring back Mary Helen Black, who's the director of alumni clubs and associations to make those announcements. And in order to do that, I had to give the awards and write them down for Mary Helen. So Mary Helen, here you go. Thanks, Chuck. Okay, so the winner of the first crowd favorite of the night is Kudos! Congratulations! Yay! 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 Okay, now we're going to turn to the results of the marathon pitching session today. So, the winner of the $25,000 runner-up prize is... Kudos again! Congratulations! Thank you so much. So with this win, what are your next steps for your venture? We're all dying to hear. Yeah, well, thank you so much. We are so honored to receive this award. Um, Kudos will officially be launching this Mother's Day. So we plan to get our diapers onto as many changing tables as possible to help parents dish diaper rash for good. And we'd love to have people sign up for early access at mykudos.com. Excellent. Thanks so much for sharing that. Thank and good luck. congratulations again. Thank you. Okay. And now for the grand finale, the winner of the $75,000 grand prize for the alumni track is Bone Health Technologies. And congratulations. We'll give a couple minutes for our technology to catch up to uh, this big award. Let's give a moment, maybe another round of applause. Hello there. Congratulations. It's great to see you, and um, we'd all love to hear how this funding will help move your venture forward. Looks like we might have a bit of a frozen screen, screen folks, so we'll give a 30 seconds or so to see if it works itself out. Okay, well, I think we are going to go ahead and move on and say congratulations again. And uh, we look forward to hearing more about your venture in the future. Okay, Chuck, back to you. Great. Thanks, Mary Helen. Congratulations to our alumni track winners. Fantastic job. Okay, so now it's time to move on to our social enterprise track and its winners. So in order to do that, I'm going to bring back Rob Zesky, Director of the Social Enterprise for Entrepreneurship. And same thing as before, I have his awards here. So Rob, here you go. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Exactly what I needed. Uh, so we are going to get started with the crowd favorite award tonight. So the Social Enterprise Track crowd favorite $5,000 prize goes to Shelly Shoe Designs. Shelly, congratulations. We're very excited for you, so congrats, Shelly. Uh, 
at this point, I will move on to our runner-up. And the winner of the Peter M. Sacerdote $25,000 runner-up prize is Vocal Justice. Vocal Justice, congratulations. Yay! We're delighted for you, Shawan. So much. Thank you. Yeah, we're really excited for you. So congratulations. I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about what this award and recognition is going to mean for your important work. Yes, it means that we get incredible exposure for our work. I'm so grateful for us to receive this award so that we can continue impacting teachers and students across the country. And I'm excited for us to scale our work to even more schools so that we can work with more students in the upcoming school year. Well, thank you, Shawana. Congratulations. We are so excited and we so need uh, your venture. So thank you very much. Thank you. thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. We will now move on to the, uh, the grand prize. And the winner of the Peter M. Sacerdote $75,000 grand prize is Shelly Shoe Designs. Shelly, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Shelly, to you and your incredible team on this uh, on this recognition. Very excited for you. Can you tell us what's next for your team? <laughs> Thank you so much for this. This means the world to us. Um, we we started this wanting to change waste into beauty and into things that's meaningful for people. Um, so thank you so much for this opportunity. We can't wait to put this fund to use and help climate refugees and um, help change more waste um, to to beautiful clothing. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Section Thank you. So much. Section thank you. <laughs> Congratulations to our fantastic winners. And Chuck, back to you. Great. Thanks, Rob. Congratulations to our Social Enterprise Track winners. Fantastic job. So, keeping it moving and going on to our next track and final track this evening to award, we're going to welcome back Jody Gernon. And Jody, same as before, I have your awards for you, so here you go. Thanks, Chuck. So excited. Very happy for all the teams. Uh, so I am going to start with the crowd favorite vote on the student business track. And the winner, the winner of the crowd favorite is Hugh Beauty. Uh, <laughs> Congratulations, Hugh Beauty. Now, normally I would announce the runner-up and the winner of the $25,000 Sachu Berkstone Prize and the grand prize winner of the Dubillier $75,000 prize, but I can't. I can't because this year we had a tie for first place. Very, very exciting. So we will combine the first and second place awards and the two winners will split the $100,000 in total prize funding. So without further ado, the first winner, grand prize winner for the 2020 HBS New Venture Business Con uh, Competition is Concord Materials. Uh, Yay. Uh, after the competition. Anthony and I wish to thank all the judges for their time and for the Harvard community for putting this on. We're, we're very excited to put the proceeds to good use. We're onboarding new customers as we speak, and uh, we're looking to raise a seed round uh, early this summer. So we're very excited to help out the field and uh, do what's right for the people. Thank you so much. There you go. Well, congratulations. And uh, anybody who wants more information about their seed round, check out our site. We'll have details on how to reach out to them.
Congratulations. And last but not least, the second winner of the grand prize uh, is Hive Health. Congratulations to you both. I think it's just so wonderful. It's really exciting to have two winners this year. I think the judges had such a great field to choose from. Um, what are you, what do you plan to do with the funding that you're going to get from this? Yeah, thank you so much. We will use this funding to uh, help with our pilot launch this summer um, in the Philippines. So thank you so much. Yeah, and we just want to thank all our advisors, our partners, our friend, friends and family and everyone who went with us with this journey and we're really excited um, to do our pilot and make more impact. Yeah, thank you. Terrific, good luck, congratulations. Let's, set, let's have a great hand for all of our winners. Back to Chuck. Great, thank you Jody. And congratulations to all of our new venture competition winners this year. Give them a round of applause please. Give them a shout out in the chat. Be excited for these teams tonight. If you happen to know them, I would also encourage you to reach out, send them a note congratulating them about the win. I do want to send a special thank you to our many partners at HBS who helped make tonight a reality, including Marketing and Communications, IT, Clarman Studios, Clarman Live Events. We could not be here tonight without them. I also want to say a special thank you to the frontline workers at HBS who are keeping campus open and running right now. We appreciate your service. We're going to send you a quick little survey. It's also going to be in the chat right now, so just fill it out. Let us know how we did tonight. I mentioned it earlier, but I want to make sure you heard me. We're going to have our Rock Center Demo Day on April 8th at 6.30 p.m. Hop onto our website. Again, that's entrepreneurship.hbs.edu. Go to the Accelerator page to join us for that event. You can also pop onto the NVC site to learn about the teams you saw, hbs.edu slash NVC. That'll take you right to the finalists. Next year, as Jody mentioned, is going to be the 25th anniversary of the new venture competition, so we hope that you'll come back. Please join us, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So with that, thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate your contributions to entrepreneurship at HBS and the competition. And with that, good night.